Thanks, Bill, for the introduction. Hello and welcome, everyone. This is Adil Ali from API-Matic. Just flew all the way from New Zealand yesterday. Yeah. Just because Stockholm is too beautiful to miss in autumn. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about SDKs and code samples uh, as the cornerstones of API developer experience. And why in this marketing session? Because if you are talking about API marketing, you are talking about your target audience, who are none other than developers. And if you exactly know what are their requirements, what things they're looking to consume your API, if you are able to speak their language, then you can ensure that they are getting the best developer experience and you are getting the best engagement for your API. So let's begin by asking a simple question. How many professional developers do you think are in the world? Any guesses? Sorry? Six? Six? <laughs> OK. So according to Stack Overflow, there are 50 million developers, out of which 21 million are professional developers. And you can see a distribution from the latest survey of 2018. The link is given at the bottom. So while I was looking at these numbers, a thought came into my mind that, that I'm talking about developer experience. These developers are no one new. Like they exist. The developers have been around for more than half a century. So did anyone ever thought about developer experience before? What about like in 50s or 60s? And while I was thinking about that question, a thought came into my mind that how developer experience was dealt a few decades ago. And uh, for that, I went through an analogy. So I don't expect you to guess, to be honest. Here's a machine code of uh, a function. But it's still maybe like there is an old school developer who knows machine code very well. So any guesses what is it written here? Uh, <laughs> nice guess, but it's not. Yeah. So it's a simple you know, swap function. And uh, in high level language, you can see over here an assembly code down there and the machine code. Still, developers write in high-level language, which is translated into assembly and then machine code, but they don't know. Everything is done for developers at the back. All the processes are done because your computer still understands machine code. So why we don't ask developers to write machine code or assembly code? Because it's not productive. It's not creative. And we want developers to only focus on what's unique and what's creative while abstracting out everything which is redundant, which is non-creative. And the, the, the answer to the question that what happened to developer experience a few decades ago is this. So developer experience has always been about letting developers focus on what is creative while abstracting out whatever is redundant. So now fast forward to The API world, the developer experience for the API world. And uh, there's always a list. Christoph presented a very nice list. So here I'm going to uh, quote my friend Kin Lane. Here's a list of the things that you need to have uh, you know, uh, with your APIs to provide a great developer experience. I'll be focusing only on two things. One, code samples. And number two, SDKs. Why? The reason is that. There, these two are the things where the real complexity comes. And if you are deciding to provide, to include SDKs and code samples in your developer portal, then you need to be dealing with a lot of things. For example, if you, you know, just distribute all those 50 million developers among developer communities, you can get this distribution. And as an API owner, it will be your choice that which community are you going to drop. 
if you don't have you know, expertise in that language, if you're unable to speak the language of that community. Imagine you are happy to draw PHP. Just remove all the purple guys from here. So this makes you know, developer experience or the speaking of language, speaking the language of developers quite important. And how you can help the developers, I want to just let you know, take you a little step back and go behind the scenes of an API call. Just keep in mind the analogy of machine code versus high level language code. So at its very basic level, an API call is simply, you know, you provide an input and get an output. Think of a remote function or remote method. So what is typically given as an input are configurations, arguments for an API call, and authentication information. And while a developer gets it, he goes through a, a series of steps, from checks and validations to encoding input, serializing, building HTTP request, making HTTP call, deserializing the response, decoding, and handling errors. And after all that, we receive a response, or you can say output, of uh, the intended API call. Again, developers are great. They can take care of each and every step. But what steps are creative and what are redundant? And remember the golden principle of uh, developer experience? Just remove the redundancy from the life of developers. So all of these steps, which are you know, essential to make an API call, can be extracted out in the form of an SDK, which can be encapsulated as a you know standalone library in the language of uh, you know uh, developers who are coding uh, who are looking to consume an API. And uh, since like you know we have been working with automatic SDK generation for almost four years at API Matic, we think that if you talk about SDKs alone or API wrappers, then if you are providing HTTP calls and uh, serialization and deserialization, then the basic SDK is done. But what if you go an extra mile to help developers? You provide caching, retries, validation, authentication. Imagine your API provides a OAuth two-legged flow. Of course, your developer can learn to obtain the token, refresh it after every 30 minutes. But what if another API provides a three-legged flow? You can expect him to learn that as well. But why not just do it for him? Just make his life easier so that he can, he can focus on what is productive, what is unique. So uh, that's how you know, we call SDKs, uh, not API wrappers. The second cornerstone I want to talk about are code samples, which are the quickest path to your first hello world. So uh, when we begin uh, providing SDKs, we relied developers to bring their own code samples. And there are other tools available who produce code samples in, in you know, different languages. But I, when I personally tried some of the, you know, those tools, I found a couple of problems. For example, this is a code sample automatically generated by you know, uh, a portal solution. Two problems I found. Number one, this one is static. You need to work with whatever is provided to you and add your own input. And uh, I found that incomplete. Because if I have to figure out what HTTP client I'm going to you know, use, how to configure that, if I'm making a call and getting a response, and if I'm unable to parse into different objects in my language, then still I have to learn different things. And as a developer, my task is to stay creative by working on my application. So very recently at uh, you know, APMatic, we came up with a solution, which, is, which we call dynamic or live code samples. And how we are doing it? We are letting developers to create, to draft those code samples using an API console. So I'm sure you might have seen a lot of API consoles. Uh, just going to give a few examples here. So on left, you can see you know, uh, an API console. And here, 
if I add, you know, my email address, this is to, you know, just create, uh, create share payload. You can see uh, a variable is created with, with, you know, whatever I typed here. Not only that, if I click add new, then I can get, you know, a further object. Uh, and uh, the code, respective code, has been generated over here. But uh, if you go further down, sometimes it happens that uh, some fields contain you know, multiple options. And of course, you can ask developer to go through documentation and understand what are those, those options. But what if you provide that multiple choice right in your API console? For example, here I have selected this enterprise, and you can see the variable on right, company type or enterprise. So a developer is basically building through, you know, the, the first hello world, the application by not going back and forth to API documentation, but focusing only on, you know, what is important. So if I click, so right now, this is only a code snippet, which can be copied and pasted into an application. But of, what if I am writing a code from scratch, my first hello world? So if I click on show complete file here, I can see the complete sample application with all the imports, with all the you know, authentication taken care of. And you can see the first hello world which is required to call an API. So here we are letting a developer to you know, mix or blending creative and redundant part. So in this code sample, for example, you can see over here, the cl client ID and client secret, these two are, of course, you know, unique to uh, you know, a particular user. Again, the payload is also unique or creative, you can say, but rest of it is redundant. And if you are able to automatically provide these things while leaving out the blanks for, for unique parts, then you are achieving the same principle of you know, developer experience that leave creative to developers and provide what is redundant. And uh, one more thing you might notice here, that this code sample is not taking an OAuth token. It's just asking for client ID and client secret. And you know, uh, going through the OAuth server, opening the token and keeping it refresh is all done at the back. So this kind of developer experience, if you are able to provide, then you can save a lot of time of a developer. So to conclude, what developers should be doing? From the provider side, they should be designing and developing APIs. While at the consuming side, consumption side, they should be designing and developing application, which is the creative bit. But what they end up doing is like you know, creating, testing, and updating docs and portals after every API update, code samples by hand, SDKs by hand. And at the consumption side, a developer ends up adding a lot of you know, logic, authentication, retrace, caching, everything by, by his hand. So a great developer experience or a great way to market to developer would be just remove the redundancy via automation to provide a premium developer experience. And I want to end the presentation by quoting Nelson Mandela, which I quoted last year as well, that if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. But if you talk to him in his native language, that goes to his heart. And developers are no different. Speak their language. Let them consume your APIs by providing SDKs and code samples in their favorite language. And get a lot of love in return. Thank you.